for uh, it feels like an entire year, basically. Uh, basically, yeah. I mean, he of course won the first Open Series event where Constantine here was legal with Jess Guy when you and Matthias were in Edison. Mm -hmm. And he's been playing it ever since. <laughs> yeah, he really hasn't switched decks ever. He starts off with a Temple of Triumph to get round number five here underway. Mystic Monastery as well here from Kevin. Chad with a Temple. We'll see where this card's going to go as he resolves his scry. He's going to leave it on top, pass it back over to Jones. Does Jones have the turn three Mantis Rider? That is the question. He'll start by playing a Fluttershy and he'll sacrifice that. Down to 19 he goes. Arguably in this spot, Goblin Rival Master is the real prize. I would prefer to have that given the option. He will get a basic island. But either one of those threes right now is excellent. As long as he has something to do on turn three that's not land to go, I think you're pretty happy if you're Kevin Jones. It's going to be a hoardling outburst. Still fine. Yeah, the least powerful of the three three drops in this spot, but still totally fine. Three goblins on the way here for Mr. Jones. One copy of BioBlight in Chad's main deck this, this weekend. Kevin going to come across here for three points of damage. BioBlight's really on a decline. Yeah, a lot of those spots have been taken up by ultimate price now with the rise of Stormbreath Dragon decks and green devotion strategies. Obs on Charm going to resolve here for Castell. Very slow and clunky draw thus far for Chad. And this can happen. Yep. There's a Thoughtseize. Kevin going to show the goods. Two dig through time, stoke the flames. Ojatai's command and Goblin Rebel Master. I'll tell you, Ojatai's command is, it got really popular almost out of nowhere. There are a lot of really good four and five mana creatures floating around in standard right now that are getting played a lot. And that card is going to be Cryptic Command in a lot of spots against those decks. Let's see what Chad wants to take here. He's going to go with Ojitai's command. Can't let that hang around. And that hand is not bad. I mean, everything in Kevin's hand is very good right now. And Ojitai's command was the selected card. Seussator Wayfinder, because Chad, I believe, needs a land. He turns over a Courser of Crufix. And Elspeth and the Thoughtseize, those go all into the graveyard. Windswept Heath goes to the hand. He plays a Temple of Silence as the land for the turn. Scribes the top card to the bottom, passes the turn back over to Jones. Jones with three cards in the grave card and then four lands on the battlefield. So can't dig just yet, but he can't cast Stoke the Flame, so he'll do that. And I like Kevin stoking here. It's a good use of the turn. Now there's four man play, four cards in the graveyard. Dig through times online if he wants it. Looks like it's time for a Rabble Master. Goblin on the way. One Goblin will be blocked by the Seder Wayfinder. More damage being dealt here. Jones has got to love the position that he's in at this point. There's a land. Here's a Siege Rhino from Castell. He's going to go up to nine. I feel like that needed to be end hostilities. Siege Rhino is basically trading off a turn here and trading with the Rabble Master. Good spot for Kevin. Yep. Jones will take a draw step. So far, Grandmaster in hand, along with those two cops to dig through time. Looks like he picked up a copy of Shivanry for the turn. Here comes a Goblin Token from the Rabble Master. Everybody's coming in. Rhino will trade with the Rabble Master, of course. Four damage will come across. Castell's going to go down to five. Virtual four with that Windswept Teeth in the battlefield. Jones will play the Shivan Reef. It's time for a copy of Soulfire Grandmaster with the ability to still cast Dig Through Time. Castell will take a draw here. One of these players has been playing a much more efficient game so far than the other. Night and day, really. Chad's trying to play catch up, and his cards are super powerful, so he might get close to be able to do that. But now here's a dig through time to maybe cement Kevin's advantage. Yeah, one of these players has been tapping out in most turns, and I think the other one's about to die with a lot of cards left over in hand. Typically, all on loses. Yep. If they get to cast out their cards, they're basically impossible to beat. Also implies the game went on for a long time. Yep. Kevin going to select two cards with Dig Through Time here in just a moment. Remember, he does have another copy of Dig Through Time in hand. Castell's trying to stabilize here, but he is behind as far as the life total is concerned as we head back Jones's way. Jones will take a draw step. 
number one on our season three leaderboard, though he has already qualified for the Players' Championship. And does not look great here. Yeah, I think he might have just found a couple lands off of his yeah. copy of Dictor Time. See Durano going to block. Castell down to five. All Jones can do is pass the turn back. So we head back Chad's way. Drew planes for the turn. And of course, right now for Castell, it's all about getting those spells out of his hand. And he needs to pick up some points of life too, get some blockers going as well. Let's see what this is. Corsair Crucifix. Top card, and windswept players, here. Just a couple of minutes left to sign up for the 3 o'clock modern challenge. You can sign He'll up. He'll take that. He'll enter the battlefield. Castell's up to six. Top card now, Lana Warways. He'll sacrifice the windswept teeth. He'll stay at the same life total, of course, given that Corsair's on the battlefield. He'll sacrifice the windswept teeth as well. So two heats in the graveyard. Two lands going to enter the battlefield. He'll get a forest into planes. Yeah, Chad. Pausing there momentarily to ask, you know, do you have Soak the Flames? Do you have Valorous Dance? But I think if Kevin had either of those cards in hand, you would have seen him use it last turn on the Siege Rhino and, or on Chad's face as appropriate. Third Rhino is a big deal there. I mean, Chad is now not, not only back in it, but I would argue ahead. Maybe, maybe a little interest in attacking with the Siege Rhino that's on the battlefield? I don't mind it with Kevin at 10. I mean, uh, it, it is a risky attack here. Chad might feel like... He can play defense for one more turn and then start attacking with both Siege Rhinos. I think you know what I prefer. Getting in with one? Oh, yeah. I don't mind it. You don't win by not attacking. The problem that I have with attacking with the Siege Rhino is that one of Kevin's cards in play is Soulfire Grandmaster, and it makes it likely that Kevin just gains a bunch of life if he has a burn spell in hand, and then you're the one under attack, and Kevin's got enough life points to race you. So I think I prefer holding tight for just one turn. You're probably right, but I but I like. Attacking. I appreciate your instincts. Don't get me wrong. I like attacking too, but I think if that like imagine that Soulfire Grandmaster is a Goblin Rabble Master or is a Seeker of the Way, I think Chad might make an attack there. Since it's Soulfire Grandmaster, there's just too high of a chance that Kevin gains a lot of life next turn and then does the uh, the entire attack and then some. Another dig through time here for Jones. He'll take a look at the top seven, take two cards with him. Two lightning strikes in the hand here. Two, two lightning strikes to, excuse me, choose from. Among other options here for Jones. Well, the second lightning strike is on a bit of diminishing returns because Kevin has six mana and Soulfire Grandmaster can play for at least a little while. He can uh, cast it and get it right back. But it's still probably, I mean, I think he wants one lightning strike for sure. He, uh, might, he might just need to, do, need to deal six to something. Right. That's the problem. Well, what the second Lightning Strike opens him up for is I Lightning Strike you and get it back, untap and Lightning Strike you twice, and Chad might get burned out. Can't forget that Kevin is also gaining life when that's taking place, Exactly. Too. He's got a bit of a cushion now. We'll see if that's the line of play that Jones has drawn up here. And now you can see why Kevin, uh, excuse me, Chad rather held back on the attack last turn. Just as something as simple as a Lightning Strike means Kevin can potentially gain a lot of life over the course of the next couple of turns. Temple puts the top card to the bottom. Jones will play a Mantis Rider. He'll get in here for three points of damage. Put Castell down to six, pass that turn back. The Kevin Jones Invitational card, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Good old Mantis Rider. Sater Wayfinder on top of the deck here for Castell. See how aggressive he wants to get. The problem is that Chad is getting to a spot now where he can't really hold on to the game by blocking. Even with a removal spell, he's at six. He's facing down Soulfire Grandmaster. Kevin's just resolved dig through time. I think Chad has a sense that he needs to get the game over with if he can, as fast as possible. Sansom Citadel enters the battlefield. Gain of life. Castell up to seven. Looks like he might be getting a little more aggressive now. I 
Let's get a great look at Castell's hand. He does have a copy of Obzon Charm over there. He's Rhino's having Trample right now, a pretty big deal, too. Yep. And run right over the Goblins. And just like we've seen Chris Vaymeter rip a copy of Siege Rhino, uh, excuse me, uh, Storm of Dragon to good effect over the last year. Uh, Kevin Jones and Mantis Rider has been much the same story. Oh, yeah. Obson Charm is going to take care of the Mantis Rider. Castell looks like he's going to reluctantly pass the turn back. You can tell he doesn't want to. He, he, you can tell he feels like he's supposed to attack. I, think, I don't know which is right. I think he's got, I think he's got to make an attack with something here. Because otherwise, he's looking at three turns before he can threaten to win the game. There's just so many cards off the top of Kevin's deck right now that are a disaster for Chad. Well, Chad's going to pass back. Kevin will take a draw step. Looks like he has at least one copy of Lightning Strike in hand. He'll play a Plains. Now it's time for Jones to do some thinking about maybe what does Castell have in his hand. For example, a card like Dromoka's Charm, or Dromoka's Command, pardon me, is a little worrisome. Now, you can argue that maybe Chad would have pulled the trigger on that by now, but maybe not. Yeah, I, I think that if you're in Kevin's seat, yes, you are worried about that card, but most likely Chad does something with it proactive on the previous turn instead of casting Obs on Charm. Kevin going to pass the turn back. Chad going to draw Seder Wayfinder. Of course, there are Krufix on top of the deck. Seven and nine. Looks like Castell's going to start with the Wayfinder. Corsair is one. Charm is two. Temple and Citadel are lands to choose from. Temple is what Castell will take. We'll see if we look at the top card. There's another Temple there. Castell will take that one. It'll enter the battlefield, of course. But we'll get two triggers, one from Corsair, one from Temple. The Scry will go to the bottom. Elspeth's on top of the deck. Castell's at eight life. Every point right now certainly matters. Yep. And now here comes the Rhino. I think this might be too little too late. Maybe this should have happened last turn. Uh, it's a risk, but I just don't think that there's a lot of cards that Chad can beat at this spot. And Kevin's draw steps are, well, there's so many good ones for him in this spot. Lightning Strike's going upstairs. Castell's going to five. Jones is going to eight. So flip around those life totals. Jones is going to untap. Take a draw. Will he try to go for the W right now? He has the mana to activate Soulfire Grandmaster. Lightning Strike. Get it back. Lightning Strike again. It's just an issue of how much respect you give to, to Dramoka's command here. I mean, he could basically wait another turn, say go, untap. Uh, at the end of Chad's turn, use Lightning Strike and rebuy it, untap, Lightning Strike and rebuy it, and then Lightning Strike again uh -huh. to play around Dramoka's command. If he goes for it right now and Chad has Dramoka's command, he's down the Lightning Strike for forever, yep. and then Chad's really starting to threaten him. So if Chad's not attacking for lethal next turn, Kevin may wait one more turn to play around Dramoka's command. He's under no rush. Yeah. What's really interesting about this, too, is we're, we're talking about Dramoka's command so much. I know you have Chad's necklace in front of you. I, I don't think he's playing any. No. And when you think about Ob's on control, typically they don't play any. But also it, it's, truth be told, really player to player on if they play one, two, any. Right. Well, here's the thing. If Chad does something that causes you to have to go for it, then you, Kevin has the ability to kill him at instant speed right now. So if Chad does something like play Soren or play Thoughtseize, Kevin just goes for the kill in response. Yep. But if Chad does nothing to warrant that, well, why not wait? Yeah, so going to play Obzon Charm on the end of Jones's turn. Going to put one counter on each Siege Rhino. Make him into five power creatures. And you see Kevin kind of shrug his shoulders and say, eh, I guess we'll go for it now. So he's reaching. Here's Lightning Strike. He says, I'm going to go upstairs, put you down to two, bring me up to 11. 
and going to try to kill you, and that's going to get it done. So Kevin Jones going to win game number one here over Chad Castell. Jeskai Agro does take the lead here over Obzon Control. And that was exactly the, the play in question there. Chad was doing something that was threatening lethal next turn. That caused Kevin to pull the trigger. But if Chad didn't do anything, Kevin can wait one more turn to be really safe about it. We're going to go to the sideboards here. We will start with Castell and his Obzon Control deck as he'll be on the play here for game number two. He has a copy of Bioblight, Hero's Downfall, Read the Bones, two copies of Trevoka's Command, a End Hostilities, an Ugin the Spirit Dragon, two copies of Nissa, two Drown Sorrow, two Duress, two self inflicted Wound. Really like the copies of Duress in this matchup and the spot removal spells, Bioblight, Hero's Downfall. Other side of things here for Jones, looking at three Anger of the Gods, three Master of the Unseen, three Disdainful Stroke, two Irish and Cleric, an Elspeth Sun's Champion, a Glare of Heresy, a Roast, and a Negate. I, I think a pretty safe place to start is the Glare of Heresy. Glare of Heresy, Elspeth, uh, Roast, Negate, and Disdainful Strokes. Just sort of board into more of a control deck. Master of the Unseen is a little bit dangerous in this matchup because Chad can answer the ground and he's likely to have Tremoka's commands post-board. Those might come in as well, but I definitely like the counter spells, the removal for Siege Rhino and Glare of Heresy and Rose. And we'll see how these players do sideboard for game number two. We'll talk about the Star City Games YouTube page right now. You can find the replays of this tournament and many more over at youtube.com slash Star City Games. Yeah, a lot of awesome stuff is archived over there, including all the open series event. We have versus series videos, premium archives. For, so after a month, those are free to access on the YouTube page, and we have some content that's exclusive to the YouTube page, like unboxings. Best of all, you can subscribe for free. Head over to youtube.com slash Star City Games. Get notified when we update to the YouTube page and check out the content that's archived there. One player who you'll find on a lot of those videos is Kevin Jones, someone who was qualified for our Players' Championship. We saw him in it last year. We'll see him in it again this year. Five open series top eights for him with one win. He's off to a good start this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And he's uh, someone who won the Legacy Championships during Eternal Weekend last year with Blue Red Delver, former tennis player, and an avid reader. That's actually a fun fact about Kevin. He actually kind of taught himself how to play tennis. I am a horrible tennis player. I don't know about you. I've only played about a half dozen times, so I'm bad. But I also haven't really tried to maximize my potential. But he taught himself at the age of 10, and then he loves reading, as you mentioned, at least one mystery suspense novel every week. I have to ask him if he saw Gone Girl, which I watched in the hotel room yesterday. You somehow just fell asleep through it. Pretty easily. <laughs> Pretty easily. I was exhausted in my defense. One of the best movies of the past year, and you were just not interested. Right. I, I heard cold. a positive thing, but I was, I was just out cold. Hey, yeah. look, it's us. Is it? Oh, wow. Hey, what's going on? Why are we out there? I have no idea. I, I appreciate it, though. It's our commentator tokens from Grand Prix Charlotte. If you want to get some, you can't. You should have went. You should have went to the Grand Prix. Just that easy. I bet this is Chad's doing. So, you and I, we're pretty good friends with Chad. I think a lot of people know that at this point. Mm -hmm. We've been pretty nice so far, but we know he's going to watch this replay. So we got to give him some sort of, some sort of dig. Well. I mean, if Kevin 2 owes him, then that's the ultimate dig, right? I guess that's true, yeah. So we can hold off at least for a little while. Okay, perfect. You know what, Chad? Your glasses are stupid. Why, why, why do we even have to be the ones to say it, you know? I just call it like I see it. I don't like his glasses. Chad kind of fumbled around and died there. Maybe could have attacked one turn. Not totally sure. It's unclear. Yeah, but we are, we are very good friends with Chad. I will take a reader question right now. Excuse me, a viewer question, as you guys cannot read this broadcast. I will take a viewer question. I, I'm going to try to pronounce this name of Cal Duskrin. Sure, whatever. We'll go with that. If I got it wrong, I apologize. It's a Twitter handle. Who even cares? Yeah, Maybe not even that person's name. Is there a game design problem with such a card as a single white mana, an 0-1 renowned creature with renowned 3 or 4? So it has no power, but it has renowned 3 or 4. Does renowned say when you, would, when you deal combat damage? It does. I mean, it's, that design's a little too fancy. I mean, if it was in a file, I would advocate to cut it. But it's not, would not be the end of the world if it went to print. It's not ruining any games. Okay. Because it can get big, but you have to work to get it big. Right. I mean, it's, you know, Your the design's a little too fancy for my taste. Your defiant strikes of the world? Yeah. Like, you know what design is really too fancy to a fault is Force of Savagery. That's the 8-0 trampler? That's the 8-0. That, that design is way too fancy. Naturally, this appeared in Future Sight. Uh, yes. <laughs> Along with all the other designs that are way too fancy. Bridge from below. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you cast it? It just dies. Yep. 
Not a fun rare to open up in most boosters. Try to explain that to a new player. And of course, my, my favorite design that we brought up a, a couple of shows ago, Char Rumbler. Char Rumbler, negative power creature. That's pretty sweet. There's uh, the spell, spell weavers, something or other. That's just a, a totally incomprehensible design. I, I think it's like spell weavers Altuve. Yeah, there's or something. Some... It's <laughs> <laughs> the Rumbler is great. Yeah, negative power, clearly represented in the art. Yeah, spell. I think it is spell weaver Altuve, like the baseball player. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, but this said uh, that design. If that if Renown was in Future Sight, that design would have been in the file that you just suggested. <laughs> the O one. Yeah, the O one would Renown. Spell weaver what was that Valut? I don't even know what that word Enchant, is. Enchant instant card in a graveyard. Already pretty simple. You know, that's very clear what that means. That's true. And then some things happen whenever you play a sorcery card. Copy the enchanted instant card. <laughs> <laughs> you may play the copy without paying its mana cost. If you do, remove the enchanted card from the game and attach Spellweaver Volute to another inst Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, the renown, the zero power renowned guy would have fit right in. Got it actually it. would have been a, a future shifted card. It would have had the frame, and then it's appearing now in Magic Origins. Got it. Except this time with creatures that have power. <laughs> Here's a thought, see, as Kevin did take a mulligan this game. He's on six cards. I'm going to lay it out here and get a good look at the lands. Kevin Ash, Shivan Reef, along with the Mystic Monastery. Mantis Rider, Soulfire Grandmaster, Glare of Heresy, and Stoke the Flames. Not a bad mulligan. No, a solid mulligan, but these hands are, are very vulnerable to Thoughtseize. Chad has an opening here of take a creature, kill a creature. Now your hand's reactive, and we're playing a long game, which is right in Chad's wheelhouse. Certainly is. Let's see what Chad does select here. The cards are all very different at this point. So Chad will have to take a look at his hand. Hasn't even used his temple yet. He does have a Temple of Silence in hand. So land does not appear to be an issue here for Castell. Looks like he's going to go with the Soulfire Grandmaster. By taking that, it seems as though he probably has an answer to the Mantis Rider. Well, the, the, this deck is flush with three mana removal spells. So Obzon Charm, Hero's Downfall, they both work. And Chad just trying to keep his head above water early on in the game, get into a position where he can take advantage of his more powerful spells. Mystic Monastery, pass the turn back over to Castell. Castell will take a draw step. He'll play a Forest, and it's a Courser. Top card here, Windswept Heath, pass it back. So it looks like he will be taking at least one hit from Mantis Rider. There is a Shivan Reef. I suppose Jones could go a different direction. He did draw a copy of Stratus Dancer, could morph it, but I like getting in here for three. Yes. Got to get the damage in while you can with old Mantis Rider. Stratus Dancer is just very slow in the spot, especially with Kevin having no more lands in hand. He's not going to be able to leave that card up, so. Windswept Teeth will be the land there for Castell. Going to consult the grip before he plays what looks to be a Siege Rhino. You do hope that he did remember his trigger there from the Courser. It's unclear if he did or not. Did speed through the turn a little bit. Looks like he may have seen the card below when he was flipping over. So this card will go to the bottom, it appears. We'll get a ruling here from the, uh, the table spotter on what needs to take place. As he was flipping over the top card, it looks like he may have seen one. So, Though the, the sequencing here from Chad is a little odd. If he's taking the land off the top of the deck instead of using this, playing Sandset Citadel off the top, he mm -hmm. put a Windswept Teeth out of his hand, probably means he's casting Siege Rhino this turn. Very likely. So then I question what was going on with the Thoughtseize, because if you're if you're going to leave Glare of Heresy in the hand and leave Mantis Rider in the hand, I think that I prefer Thoughtseizing away the Mantis Rider, block the Soulfire Grandmaster for a while, and then cast your Siege Rhinos. Chad's play makes a lot of sense to me if he had one removal spell in his hand, but he's sort of playing now like he has zero in hand, and if that's the case, I think I would prefer taking Mantis Rider. Well, we're going to head back Jones' way and see how this game continues to unfold. Looks like Dick Through Time may have been the draw. Here is an attack. Magic players are currently taking setups for the four o'clock legacy challenge. Let's see what's next it's here for Jones. Only one card in the graveyard for Kevin so far. Eyeing up that glare of heresy. Yep, and he's going to fire it off. Yeah. Kevin would really like to have another land there to be able to cast two spells in one turn. 
With that said, he can't just say go here, and Chad might not cast anything in his sample stroke, so. There's a Siege Rhino. Very hard card for Jeskai to beat. The Temple's the follow-up ultimate price. That's probably going to the bottom. Yeah, take a look at the next card here. It's a Drown in Sorrow. I bet Castelk wishes he could put that one to the bottom, too. But a Siege Rhino is a very hard card for the Obzon decks to beat. Excuse me, for the Jeskai decks to beat. A lot of power. It swings the damage race in two directions. You can't use Rabble Master holding outburst tokens to chump block it. Can't use red removal on it very effectively. Just a challenging card for them to beat. Temple of Triumph will scry the top card to the bottom. Jones will come across with the Mantis Rider. Castell back down at 17. Jones will have to pass the turn back. Castell draws John and Sorrow. Top card of the deck is a Windswept Heath. Windswept Heath is going to enter the battlefield. Two triggers, of course. One from Corsair. There'll be a forest on top of the deck. We'll see if Chad wants to shuffle that away or not. Now it looks like he's going to come into the red zone. I was wondering if he's ever going to make this attack with the Corsair or not. Well, now with Drown and Sorrow, it's a different incentive. Yeah, I, I feel like he's missed out on the opportunity a couple of times to bluff Ops on Charm. Possibly, yeah. There's no cost in him, really. Well, I suppose the cost is Gotham Rabble Master. If he thinks that, you know, Kevin's just going to block or that the risk of Rabble Master is too high, then maybe just hold back. I agree there might have been some bluff attacks he could have gotten in, but oh. if he respects the possibility of... Rabble Master, then he should probably hold back. No one could argue, well, you know, the Obzon Charm will just kill the Mantis Rider, so, right. Same with buffing, like, you can't buff Mild Blight, because that just kills. Yep. It would have to be some really weird trick. Stoke the Flames on the stack, targeting the Courser. Courser's now on top of the deck. Castell did sacrifice the Fetch Land. Makes you wonder what the morph may be. Likely to be a dent protector. Mantis Rider gonna come in here. Mantis Rider has dealt 12 this game and Castell's only at 15. Yep, a lot of life gain for this Obzon control deck. For a deck with no explicit life gain cards, they get, the deck does gain a lot of life. There's a copy of Roast. There goes the Siege Rhino. Jones is setting up a pretty decent turn here because you have to imagine if that is Dent Protector, it would unmorph, get back the Siege Rhino, and then Jones is actually able to disdainful stroke the Siege Rhino. The problem is, as you mentioned, it's the life totals. I mean, yeah. Kevin's, Kevin's the one getting beat up this game. But Rose was an excellent draw there for Kevin. Oh, without question. Allows him to leave up the disdainful stroke and kill the Siege Rhino. Castell will unmorph Dent Protector. It'll get a counter, of course. Going to get back Corsair of Grufix, not Siege Rhino. And now Corsair is the draw. So maybe Chad refusing to play into Disdainful Stroke that he thinks Kevin may have. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit suspicious. Disdainful Stroke is a very popular card in Just Guy Dex as a sideboard plan against Obzan. And Chad just saying, I think it's there, and I'm going to take my time with it. Here's an attack for three. Jones doesn't want to block with Mantis Rider, but he's almost forced to because he's so low. He's already yeah. at nine. It's an ugly spot to be in, but with Dig Through Time in hand and the life totals the way that they are, he kind of has to block there. Another Corsair, and now a Temple. Game two, take a look at that top card, Seder Wayfinder. That's going to go to the bottom. Let's see what's next here for Castell. Just an Urborg. That'll be a draw next turn. Jones will untap. Five cards in the graveyard. Couldn't fire off a Dig just yet. What's really awesome about what Chad's done this game is he's winning... The offense and the defense battle. He's he's the one ahead on life totals and board presence, and the one winning the card advantage battle. Lenore Waste on top of the deck. That's going to enter the battlefield. Two triggers there from the Corsairs. Sands have Citadel on top of the deck. Corsairs are going to come into the red zone here. And Jones is going to need a real good dick through time to, I think, work his way out of this. Though Castell's past couple of draws have not been too great. Just a few lands on top of the deck. Yeah, it's still just an issue of, of time and mana here. Kevin's going to fall down to four here. Even if he digs through times into powerful stuff, is it going to be stuff that can answer Corsair Crufix because his deck doesn't do that very effectively? Is he going to be able to cast two spells in one turn? Because also, if you're on Kevin's side, you saw Chad get back that Corsair Crufix when he had another Corsair Crufix. It's obvious that Disable Stroke is on his radar. Yeah, I think you might have him read for that now. So if you tap out, you got to believe there's four mana spells coming. Yep. 
Just an absolute refusal to play into it. Would have been yep. so easy to get back to each rhino. Exactly. See the light totals here, 19 to 4 in favor of Castell. See what Jones wants to select off a of dig through time. He's got his two cards that he's happy enough with. The other five will go to the bottom. You saw within that dig through time a copy of Master of the Unseen. Uh, just a touch slow given the positioning. Yep. Jones will play a Shivan Reef. Here's Dragonlord Ojitai. That can change some things. But as you mentioned, now the window is open for a card like Elspeth, though it's only on top of the deck. And we'll see if Chow is holding back any fours. See Drano, perhaps? So Drano and Sorrow is going to finish things off here. Been a while since we've seen that card, actually. We saw it on top of Chad's deck much earlier in the game. And I think it's a situation where Kevin, it, well, he's forced to block, he's a two. Yeah, he's, so. he's facing lethal on that attack, he has no choice. Chad can leave Elspeth on top of his deck and he can actually present lethal now with the courser. But there's Valorous Stance in Kevin's hand and a copy of Disable Stroke. He can answer the courser and answer Elspeth. See if he wants to stop him in the draw step, he won't. He'll let him have the planes. See what's next. Another Elspeth. Here's the attack. There's the Valorous stance. And, no, and, and Chad puts it right in the graveyard. Yep, he knows. It's going to get countered. Just too unlikely that it will resolve. Or too unlikely that it won't resolve. But if Kevin was going to Valorous stance there, uh, he should have done that definitely De in the draw step. There's an Elspeth coming now. Yep. <laughs> Battlefield forwards the draw. But Kevin has gotten this thing turned around. He's in great shape now. The He's mana is a little tough for Kevin with the two Shivan Reefs and a Battlefield Forge in hand. Normally, Jeskai doesn't mind dealing himself some damage. It's, it's a weird spot right now. Now, he can still operate, but it's a weird spot. Stratus Insert is going to be morphed past the turn back. Elspeth the draw. There is Elspeth. So Soldier Tokens are on the way. That's a card that, unfortunately, Stratus Dancer, it can't counter. Yeah, it's only instance of sorceries. Yep. I know you're a Stratus Dancer guy. I am. Jones with Dig Through Time. He's on the hunt for answers. Well, he's got to answer Elspeth, and he's got to leave three blockers back. He's fallen to one here, casting this Dig Through Time. It's got to be one heck of a dig through time, I'll tell you that much. And he's got to be able to cast all these spells and not take a damage. Yeah, he's hey, asking a lot. Very, pretty tough. Kevin, it appears with just one Mantis Rider in hand right now. Taking a long look here at seven cards. Of course, he'll take two of them. The rest will go on the bottom of the deck. So he's found something that he's happy enough with. As now Jones will untap. He'll draw a card. And he's going to concede the game, the more of his Stratus Dancer. So Chad Castell is going to win game number two here over Kevin Jones. Ob's on control, and Jessica are going to go to game number three. And it's interesting because, you know, it felt like the balance of power was going back and forth a little bit there, but those Siege Rhino kind of chip shots from the enders the battlefield triggers would actually end up mattering quite a bit. Right. Kevin fell to one there, took some points off of his own lands. I, I think that if he Valorous stances inside of the draw step, we're potentially looking at a very different game. Because that got Chad a turn in front of getting to Elspeth, the second copy of Elspeth that eventually killed Kevin there. And if Kevin's able to dig through time on an empty board and then respond, he might have the resources to get out from under that. Maybe. It's a Possible. much different game. Absolutely. He, he, he lost to the Elspeth the following turn, and if that's two turns away instead of the, the following turn, I think it's very different. Well, these players are going to shuffle up here for game number three. About 15 minutes, maybe a little less, they'll have to play game number three. But we will very quickly talk about 
the season three leaderboard here on the Open Series. Kevin Jones, that's why the number one is next to his name. But the trophy's also next to his name, too. He's qualified for our Players' Championship. Yeah, won the point invite in season two, so he's qualified. Jim Davis, the point invite winner in season one. They're already qualified. A little bit further down the list, you see here, Ross, Miriam, Danny, Jessup, Joe Lissett, Gerard Fabiano, Chris Van Meter. To me, these are the five people really battling for the season three invite. I know Jeff Hoogland and a couple other people down the list. A little bit further, they have a, a huge point gap to make up here. You see Brad Nelson, he's already qualified as the defending champion. And then further down the list, you get down into the 140, 130, 125 range for the top 16. I think it's going to be a five-person race. For season three, I think I agree with you. You know, some players are starting to climb up the leaderboard here. Eric Hawkins, Matthew Tickle, players from the Minnesota area. You know, some newer players like Caleb Scherer, Harlan Fear as well. So they're definitely putting in the work, and those players are here this weekend, especially in Harlan's case. I saw him a little bit early, and you know he's playing Jess Guy, of course. So that's what the race does look like. We talked about Kevin Jones and him winning the point two, the season, the season two invite. You see the picture right there? And, of course, Ali Antrazi, he got the job done, won the invitation, will beat Chris Van Meet in the finals. Yeah, it was very close towards the back end of season two, but Kevin put together a very nice string of finishes in the IQs to lock up the invite coming into the season two invitational. And Ali Antrazi, as you know, the season two invitational champion with Tron in modern. Five players qualify for the Players' Championship. Jacob Wilson, Jim Davis, Ali Antrazi, Kevin Jones, and the defending champion, Brad Nelson. December 19th through the 20th, the Star City Game Center in Roanoke, Virginia. 16 competitors, $50,000. Last year's was really good. This year's already looking to be well, maybe even a little bit better than last year's. And I, I'm really excited that we're seeing some new names on the board, too. It's yeah. not going to be the same 16 players as Ali Antrazi, Jacob Wilson. Those will be new faces. I think we'll have some more new faces this year, too. I think so, as well. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch, that's for sure. I, I don't think you keep Danny just about the Players' Championship this year. I don't think so. He, I, was, I, he was the first one out in every way possible last year. I think uh, there's a reasonable chance that Andrew Jessup qualifies, his brother as well. And then some of those players you see on the top 16, all of those names you're not familiar with, that's because they're doing a lot of their work right now in 2015. And I think that a lot of those players are going to be looking at at-large bids at the end of the year. I know that you are uh, here an Andrew Jessup guy. I think he's very good. Yeah. I think he is very good. These two players we're watching, they're off to great starts this weekend here in Baltimore. Chad Castell on your left, Kevin Jones on your right. Hobbs on control, Just Guy Agro. Remember, this is our last tournament where Drag Star Cure is the newest standard set. You know, when we go to Chicago a couple weeks from now, that's when Magic Origins fun begins. Exactly. We've got a couple weekends off, July 4th weekend off, Origins pre-release off, and then we're in Chicago. First time in Open Series history. You a fireworks guy? Uh, I'm not opposed. Huh? I I'm pretty neutral on it. They seem really fun, so I thought you might not like them. I don't. I don't dislike them. Okay. They're loud. Right occasion, once or twice a year. It's July 4th in the new year. Yeah. That's that's fireworks for you. Are, did you ever go buy a, go buy fireworks when you were a kid? Any uh, sparklers really, for you? They're really hard to buy in New Jersey. Really? Yeah, the, the, the laws are really strict on fireworks in New Jersey, at least when I was a kid. You had to go to Pennsylvania for that. There's a lot of fireworks stores in Pennsylvania, too. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a booming industry. Yeah, I, I, just, I don't know if you've ever taken the drive from, like, all the way through Pennsylvania, oh, Pittsburgh yeah. to Philly or whatever. Yep. There's a million fireworks stores. It's crazy. South Carolina, too. Big industry in South Carolina. Sure. Chad going to start off with the thoughts. He's going to go down to 17 in the process. You saw Kevin start off with a Mystic Monastery. We'll get an idea of what Jones's hand looks like here. A couple of lands called the Mantis Rider, Dragon Lord Ochatai. A Soulfire Grandmaster and a Stoked Flames. Very solid hand here for Kevin. A little more durability against removal spells. Seems like a hand you're going to keep every time. So see if Castell wants to take you see a couple of lands there in Island and Temple of Epiphany. It's got to be one of the creatures, and it's just curve consideration here. Well, he's going to knock out the Soulfire Grandmaster, much like what we saw in the previous game. Yep. Flooded Strand the draw. Temple of Epiphany will be the play. Take a look at the top card here, Will Jones. Looks like he's going to leave it on top. We head back Castell's way. It's another copy of Thoughtseize. That's timely. Going down to 14 is not great, but being able to take care of a Mantis Rider and leave Kevin with just Stoke the Flames and Dragon Lord Ochatai along with a couple of lands, not so bad. Problem is these games have a habit of going on for a long time. Kevin gets a lot of draw steps, and a lot of his cards are burn spells or things with haste. So, yeah, you're picking apart this hand, but if you drag the game out for a really long time, the six points of damage you took early on setting this all up could be really bad. Castell is going to play a Temple, so he will scry. 
you know, if it's Mantis Rider or Rabble Master off the top here for Kevin, Chad's under a lot of pressure, and a function of that is going to be him being at 14 instead of 20. See what Jones left on top. He'll play a flooded strand. He's just going to pass the turn back. Go Castell's way. Good news for Chad that there was no haste right off the top there. Yep. No Mantis Rider, no Rabble Master. Those both would have been bad news. Thought he's number three. Who cares about life totals? Let me see that hand. Valor stance. Dragon Lord is going to hit the bin. Now it's all reactive. Yep. So if you're Kevin, you are really hoping to find a Mantis Rider or Goblin Rabble Master now. Three threats in the opening hand, and now they're all gone. Kevin going to sacrifice Flood Strand. Haste There's Creature, dig through time, now is a big draw. Yep, all things that he's interested in, you have to imagine. <laughs> to Jones we go. He'll play an island, pass the turn back. Castell will take a draw step. He'll start by sacrificing his windswept teeth. Looks like a forest is on the way as he's passed a couple of planes. So there is the forest that enters the battlefield. Castell already down to 11 thanks to the thought seizes and fetches. Now here's a courser. Ooh. Ooh. Boy, that's a beating. That was a top deck there from Kevin Jones. Ochtai's command. That'll come in, counter the courser. And then Soulfire Grandmaster gets to come back. That's huge for Kevin Jones. Pretty swingy effect. Yeah, that, that was a huge turn. Battlefield Forge, past that turn. Castell will take a draw. And now Stoke the Flames in Kevin's hand, too. That's still hanging out. There's a self-inflicted wound. Actually, a good answer to that problem. Kevin might just fire off the Stoke right now because it does have lifelink. Yep. And Chad's going to go down to four here, so a Stoke off the top is, is lights out. Another incentive is now Kevin's mana is freed up. Now all of his top decks are easy to cast. Sure. He doesn't have to worry about a duress snagging that Stoke the Flames if he draws something that requires all of his mana. Mantis Rider would be huge here, be able to protect it with Valorous Stance. Let's see what the draw was. Oh, yeah, sure. I shrug my shoulders too. Dick through time is pretty good. Yep. He's able to find Stoke plus land. It's over. Let's see if he's able to find what he's looking for. Lands aren't an issue. No Stoke yet. He'll slow roll himself a little bit. Valor Stance, the last card in hand. Rabble Master is the card that he's found. The real prize here is burn spells, but I don't think there's a lot of that left in his deck. That's probably the first thing that gets boarded out. Stoke is powerful enough that you keep it in, but cards like Lightning Strike, probably not in the deck anymore. Looks like Kevin's going to take Rebel Master and Master of the Unseen, or at least he's deciding if he wants Master of the Unseen. Looks like he's going to put that to the bottom. Dig through time done resolving. Here's the Rebel Master. See if this is able to make a goblin. Looks like it is. So no ultimate price there for Castell. Castell's going to go down to three. Now would be a good time to draw a Siege Rhino. Chad has no answers. All he can do is extend the hand. Kevin Jones going to win this match here over Chad Castell. Two games to one. Jessica Agro will take care of Obzon control. Jones will move on to 5-0. and oh. And if Chad lost that, that match anywhere, I feel it's like with the sideboarding. I don't think Thoughtseize is particularly good in this matchup. The game's gone for a very long time. 